Good morning, everyone. This is Lori Delk Radecki with the Nashville Networking Business Luncheon. So we do these several times a month all over Middle Tennessee. So every single Tuesday, we are right here live on Zoom. And then in person every single week um, all throughout Middle Tennessee. So if you're not on our schedule and you would like to be, go to NashvilleNetworkingGroup.com. You can also find us on groups on Meetup, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You can join us in all three places or any of the above and find out who our special speakers are each week. We have a speaker that is 10 to 15 minutes and talks to us about different tips, tricks, ideas, things that can all help us in our personal as well as our business life to help get us to that next level. After that, we go around the room and everybody has one minute, give us their name, what they do for a living and how we can better refer other people to you. We have some open networking before and after the meeting and the in-person meetings, we eat lunch together and exchange business cards, the online meetings. We, you can eat lunch online if you want, but we get together for an hour and we also have the chat bar where we exchange business cards virtually there. So whatever your level of comfortableness after, after COVID situation, um, you're welcome to join us at any of the different locations. So I'm gonna introduce our speaker today as Mr. Terry Lancaster. Please give him your attention. Good morning, everyone. Well, well, welcome aboard. I am Terry Lancaster. And today, everyone, we're of course, we're all salespeople, entrepreneurs here, and uh, we've all, uh, we, when I, when, I was, uh, when I was fresh out of college, I, uh, I drove around North Mississippi and I had a Zig Ziglar tape in my car. I listened to Zig Ziglar every single day. And Zig, uh, Zig is a motivation, old school motivational speaker. And one of the things Zig says is people say that motivation doesn't last, but neither does bathing, which is why we rec recommend it daily. So I'm gonna take what Zig said one step further and uh, it pains me to say this because I've, I've, I occasionally get called a motivational speaker as well when I am I'm doing speaking. That's kind of the, the cubby hole everybody puts it in. But motivation, motivation is practically useless as a tool for, uh, for uh, enacting long-term change in your life. Uh, everyone, everyone wants to get motivated and pumped up. And motivation is easy. Motivation is easy. That's why, uh, that's why the gyms are all full on January 2nd. Gyms are full on January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th. But then the inevitable always happens. And that is the motivation fades. Motivation goes away because motivation is useless as a tool for long-term strategy. Motivation will always, always fail you. By definition, motivation will fail you at the exact moment that you need it most when you have no motivation, when you're not motivated. And if you're relying on motivation and your motivation runs out, then, then, then what do you do? And motivation, it actually functions like a muscle. And that is the more you use it, the less you have. It is a depletable asset. And that's why so many salespeople are so hungry for motivation. And they, they, they post their Facebook walls with, uh, with motivational, uh, motivational quotes. And they have posters around their office with motivational sayings. And they're doing everything, everything to keep themselves pumped up. But they always have to go get it externally. They're looking, they're looking to fill their self back up because the motivation is depletable. It goes away. So they're constantly having to refill the bucket with more motivation. Um, so you can't really count on motivation. So the thing we go to then is we go to discipline. And, uh, and again, discipline works just like motivation. You, discipline is, I'm going to make myself do this. I'm going to make myself get up at five o'clock in the morning and go run, go run three miles every day. I'm going to make myself sit down and make the 50 phone calls that I need to make. I'm going to make myself sit down and do the stuff that I know that I have to do. But eventually the discipline will fade too, because if you're making yourself do something that you hate doing, it's just, it's just, it's a constant struggle. It's a constant battle. And I don't know how you want to live your life, but I don't want to live my life in a constant state of struggle and battle and fighting against my nature, forcing myself to do something. So motivation is not the answer. 
Discipline is not the answer. That's not how you make things happen over the long term. That's not how you're going to change your life. You have to have discipline. You have to be motivated, but they have to be deep seated down beside you coming from within instead of something that you're trying to force yourself to bring from without. And if external motivation and, and forced hardcore discipline aren't the answers for getting the things done that you know you need to get done, what's the answer? Well, the answer is habit. The answer is habit. As salespeople, we're all we're y'all used to uh, thinking of ourselves as we're masters of our of, of our own domain. We are masters of the universe. We control our lives. That the life we create is a product of the decisions that we've made. We create our own life by making decisions every single day, by being motivated, by being disciplined, by forcing ourselves to do these things to create the life that we want to like. But but we're wrong. We're not. We're not creatures and products of our discipline. We're not products of our decision. We're all, every single one, products of our habits. We are products, the life we live is a product of the habits that we are created. I mean, the truth is, uh, you're, you're a robot. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, you're a robot. Most human beings, they go through life half the time, 50% of our life, we spend on autopilot. We're going through and we're, we're actually, we're completely unconscious of what's going on around us because we're lost in our thought. It's that feeling that you get when you're driving down the highway and, uh, and, and you miss your exit because you're not paying attention uh, because we, we don't pay attention to what's going on. We're running on autopilot half the time and we've programmed ourselves. We've actually created a program inside our brain to get us through the day. And that's exactly what a habit is. A habit is a program that your brain has created to alleviate some of the decision-making process. You don't have to make these decisions because you've written a program in your brain to let you do it. You take the same path to work every day and you don't have to decide whether I'm gonna turn left at the stoplight, I'm gonna turn right at the stoplight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take exit 72 or I'm gonna take exit 75. You don't have to make that decision every single time you drive to work because the decision has been made, you've written the program and stored it in your brain. It's a program. Uh, you, you, when you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you don't decide whether you're going to put the peanut butter on the left side or the jelly on the right side or which way. You do it the same way you've always done it because you've written a program to take that pressure off of you and you can cut, you to use your brain to, uh, to, to, uh, to do higher level things. My favorite word is automaticity. That's when things just happen automatically and you can keep yourself functioning, keep your decision making for higher level items. So today I'm going to tell you how to reprogram your brain. It's it's just it's just a computer program just like if you sit down you're writing computer code and computer code is often is is written in logic form. If this then that. And then and, and you set up this this this, this logic tree uh, that that forces the computer to make instantaneous decisions. And that's what uh, that's that's what I have it is so the first thing you're going to do, if you're going to write a program for your brain, you have to find if this, then that. The first thing is if what? And that's called the trigger. You have to have a trigger to set off the program to get the program in action. And I was watching a, uh, I watched a TEDx video several years ago by a guy by the name of BJ Fogg. And this was all about habit. And he decided that he was going to, uh, he was going to create a habit and he needed to do more push-ups. He needed to do more push-ups, and he knew he needed a trigger to force him to do more push-ups. And what he did is he decided um, he, he needed something that he did every day, that he did on a regular basis, and that and he was going to link these two items together so that every time one thing happened, if he did the first thing, he was going to do a push-up. And he decided that uh, what he was going to do is he was going to do a push-up every time he went to the bathroom to go pee. Every time I go to the bathroom and go pee, I'm going to go outside in the hallway, get in a different room, drop to the floor and give myself one, give myself a push up. So that sound of the toilet flushing was the trigger that initiated the program in his brain to do a push up. So if you're looking to make more phone calls or go to exercise, look for something that's in your life uh, that uh, that will force you. To, to do that. One of the things I, I, I do uh, on a fairly regular basis is when my alarm goes off in the morning, 
I get on the floor and do a plank. I do a one minute plank immediately. As soon as, as soon as the alarm goes off and I, and that sets off my whole initial series of my morning habits, my morning, my, my morning routine. And they start right then when the alarm goes off, that's the trigger. Step two for creating a program in your brain, a habit is you have to, you have to start small. If BJ Fogg had said, every time I flush the toilet, I'm going to do a hundred pushups. Well, he didn't have the motivation or the discipline to get him through that yet. And his brain is going to be, your, your brain is constantly fighting against you. Uh, the whole no pain, no gain thing is, is kind of BS because your brain is constantly fighting against it. If, if your brain thinks it's going to be painful, it's going to be constantly trying to come up with excuses that you want to do it. So step two is starting small starting so small that you can't not do it. Every time the toilet flushes, I'm going to do a push-up. Every time my alarm goes off, I'm going to do a one-minute plank. Not going to change the world. I'm going to start small and then increase a little over time. As, as I get better, as the, as the habit becomes more ingrained, as it takes less and less motivation and discipline to get that one push-up done, maybe I can do two push-ups. Maybe I can do three but I'm not, as long as I'm not constantly fighting against myself. So look for a trigger. Start small. Every day, every day at three o'clock, trigger. Alarm goes off at three o'clock. I'm going to make five customer phone calls. I'm going to make five cold calls. Um, I, uh, my, mine is at, at the end of the day at five o'clock, I, I, I send out five videos, five videos to customers on, on LinkedIn. So look for a trigger. Start small. And step three is reward yourself. The brain is a reward seeking mechanism. It's constantly, it's like, it's, it's like your little puppy there, Kimberly. It's, it's looking for a way to be happy. You, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're going to train Mocha to do tricks, you, uh, you, you, you show Mocha the trick. And every time Mocha stands up, rolls over, whatever it is you want Mocha to do, you give Mocha a treat. And if you're wanting to establish a routine, a habit, you, you treat your brain the same way. You give yourself a reward. And the reward your brain is constantly seeking is dopamine and serotonin. Happy juice. I love the happy juice. That, and that's what a habit is. It's the same habit that, uh, that an addict has. There's not much, much difference between the habit and addiction. It's just one's positive and one's negative. But if you're addicted to donuts, you're not addicted to donuts. You're addicted to the serotonin and dopamine that your brain releases every time you get one. And you see that plate of donuts and uh, all that happy juice floods over your brain and go, me like donuts and you grab one and eat one sometimes before you ever even thought about it before you ever 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 realize you have a donut in your mouth you've already you've, you've already got it down the hatch because your brain knows that the moment that donut hits your mouth you're going to be flooded with serotonin so you want to celebrate your victories to uh to to release that serotonin so your brain is constantly on the lookout for another opportunity to set off the trigger to run the program again so what BJ Fogg did is uh, he, 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 he had to remind himself to celebrate that victory. So when the toilet would flush, he would drop to the floor and do one push up and stand up, put his hands in the air, wave them around like he just don't care. Say, I'm awesome. Or my personal favorite, the magic words, always, always, always winner, winner, chicken dinner. Put a big smile on your face. You, you put your hands in the air. You put a big smile on your face and you say something stupid like winner, winner, chicken dinner. Your, your brain's going to flood with serotonin. It's happy. It's always going to be on the lookout for more opportunities to be happy, for more opportunity to get that happy juice. So it's going to look for that trigger that sets off that small action that you're always going to be doing, doing the thing, and, and, and it becomes an endless cycle. So the fourth step is just simply repeat. Simply repeat the program over and over and over again till it gets hardwired into your brain uh, until you can't not do it. I, uh, December 1st, 2014, I decided that I was going to run a mile every single day. Uh, and uh, I, I did. I, start, I started running a mile and I ran every mile for three and a half years. Three and a half years, I ran a mile every single day until one morning, uh, I forgot. One, one day I'd had a long day. I had to drive to Knoxville to pick up my daughter and, and bring back. And it was raining and I was so tired when I got back. I fell asleep without going for a run. But my brain, even though it had let me forget, so people say sometimes it takes 21 days to build a habit. 
Well, it's flexible. Sometimes it takes forever to build a habit. And even no matter how hard ingrained the, ha the habit is, sometimes it goes away. Uh, but after three and a half years, when I didn't run a mile, the first thing that happened, I woke up the next morning, my eyes opened, I looked outside the window, the birds, uh, the birds were chirping, the sun was shining. And I said, I'm gonna go for a run in the park today. It's gonna be excited. And then I remembered that I hadn't ran the day before. Uh, and and uh, so, but I ran three and a half years, I built this streak. And then I ran another year and a half after that until I blew out my knee and, and literally couldn't run anymore. But I've ran, I've walked another uh, mile a day every, uh, every day for a year or so since then. So every day, except the one for the last six years, I've created this habit. And uh, my trigger is now, my trigger is keeping the street going. My trigger is it's sunny outside. I'm going to go run. My serotonin is I get to, uh, I get to, uh, I, I get to go outside and enjoy the sunshine. The sun shuts on my face. I can't not go outside and walk anymore. So whatever you're trying to accomplish in your life, whether it's health, whether it's fitness, whether it's career success, you know, motivation is great. Uh, being disciplined is great. Put the posters on the wall if you want to. Put the posters on your Facebook page if you wanted to. But, but try to find it inside. And if it's something, if you know what you need to do to accomplish, to get where you want to be, don't think about forcing yourself to do it. Think about programming your brain to make it a habit so it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Thanks, y'all. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much, Terry. And so if you are watching us online, this is the end of our recorded portion. So join us in person and line each week and get to participate in the whole group. So NashvilleNetworkingGroup.com or also join our groups on Meetup, LinkedIn, as well as Facebook. Thanks, everyone. Good night.